Hungarian folk tales. The Silken Meadow. Once upon a time, there lived a great king, and the king had a gallant, handsome son. But alas, the king was always sad. One day his son decided to ask him why he was always so sad, and his father, the king, replied, I see, my son, that you are a valiant man of courage and skill, for you triumph over the finest swordsmen, and you fell the most ferocious beasts. But I can find no joy in this, for I have a close friend from whom six months ago I received a message. There is a beautiful silken meadow in the middle of the golden forest. My friend lives there. But the witches were so envious of his wondrous lands that they sent their minions to descend on him in their thousands. He has begged me to come to his aid, but as you see, I am old and I cannot go. Dear father, then I will go. I will wander the forest until I find your friend. Good, my son. May the Lord go with you, but listen closely to me. Behind the stables there is a large pit full of mud. There you will find the horse I rode in my youth. I urge you to take him as your mount. But first you must feed him. In the garden you will find twelve bundles of wood. Set them all aflame, and when they have burnt to cinders, take the horse from the pit and feed him, for he eats nothing but smouldering coals. So he set the wood aflame, and when it had burnt to cinders, the prince took the horse from the mud pit and dragged him to the burning coals. Then the horse began to eat and grew visibly stronger and more vigorous. When he had finished, his coat glistened. The prince stood gaping in wonder, for he had noticed that the horse had six legs. His father spoke, Now, dear son, go up to the attic. There you will find shimmering swords, but among them you will see one covered with rust. Take it as yours. So the prince went up to the attic and brought down the rusty sword. He tried to draw it from its scabbard, but he was unable. No, son, that is not how you draw this sword. You tell it, sword, come forth from your scabbard. Hardly had the prince uttered these words and the sword flew from the scabbard, slicing the air with a swoosh. Now tell it, sword, come back to your scabbard. Hardly had the prince uttered these words and the sword was already back in its scabbard. Father and son embraced, both shedding tears, they bid farewell. The prince mounted the six-legged horse, and the horse flew into the air, straight as an arrow. Then the horse slowed and began to descend into a beautiful forest filled with trees of gold. There the prince set off on foot. Soon he saw the edge of the silken meadow, and in the middle of the meadow, a tent. And when he reached the tent, he saw a grey-haired man sleeping on a bed. In one of the corners of the tent there hung a curtain. Pulling the curtain aside, he saw a beautiful gold bed, and in it lay a maiden with golden hair and a golden dress. One of her legs and one of her arms were hanging off the side of the bed, and the prince stepped over to her, took her leg in his hand, and placed it gently back on the bed. The maiden was not asleep, but she watched him out of the corner of one eye. When the prince took her hand to place it on the bed, the maiden wrapped her arms around his neck and kissed him. Let us be man and wife and live together forevermore. I know you are tired, so step back to the middle of the tent and sleep. The prince did as she asked and immediately fell into a deep slumber. As the prince fell asleep, the old man awoke and saw that there was a stranger in the tent. He drew his sword to fell the strange man, and as he was about to strike, it occurred to him to wonder, this man also has a sword. I myself was asleep when he entered. He could have slain me. I will not do him any harm. And when the young prince awoke from his slumber, the old man spoke, Boy, who are you, and what do you seek here? Unless I am mistaken, it is you that I seek. My father sent me to come to your aid, 
You are the son of my dear friend, the Red King? I am. It is good that you have come, for the witch's minions have been besieging me now for well over a year. And I see you have brought your father's sword, the companion to mine. For you should know, young prince, that no matter how many witches I slay with mine, 10,000 more come in their place. Do you see that huge mountain? An old witch lives in a cavern in the mountainside, and she sends her minions in droves to attack me. Until we slay her, I will have no peace. They rose early the next day, and as the sun rose, the witch's minions came in droves. And they poured down the mountainside like lava from a hot volcano. Then they drew their swords and slashed them to pieces. The Red Prince set off for the mountain. His saw sliced through the witches like a knife through warm butter. When they reached the hole in the mountainside, he decided to go in and see what lay inside. And what do you think he saw? In the middle of a huge cavern, a loom. And at the loom, an old woman, whose nose was so long and so crooked, it reached the ground. And the old witch pedalled so hard that every time she lifted the shuttle, a hundred of her minions sprang forth, ordered them to attack the aged man. Go forth to the silken meadow, kill the old man. The prince leapt to the witch's side, took the dagger from his belt and thrust it into her heart. And what happened then? The huge mountain crumbled into dust and was scattered by the winds. In the space of a moment, it was as if it had never even been there. And what was there in its place? A beautiful silken meadow. The old man caught his daughter forth and spoke, Good prince, I have no other child, only this one daughter. If you love her, I shall give you her hand in marriage, and with it, my entire kingdom. So the priest came, and the prince and the maiden were married in the silken meadow, and they all lived happily ever after. Hungarian folk tales. Sebastian, the Dragon Slayer. Once upon a time, there was a poor man. And the poor man had three sons. They were so poor that they could not afford to buy even the smallest morsel of food. So they decided to go and see the king and tell him of their misfortune. As they were ambling and rambling along their way, they saw an old shepherd grazing sheep on the hill. The eldest son said, Ah, if these sheep were mine, I would give one to every poor man. The old shepherd replied, Then from this moment on, you shall be the shepherd here, and the sheep shall be yours. The two other youths continued on their journey, and the old man went with them too. They reached a field of hawthorn. The second son said, If only there were vines in this field and not hawthorn, and if only the vines were mine, I would give a vine of plump grapes to every poor man. Then let the field be yours, said the old shepherd. And instead of a field of hawthorn, let it be a vineyard and the second son stayed to tend the vines. The third son continued on his journey with the old shepherd by his side, and soon they arrived at the banks of a broad river. The young man said, if only I were the ferryman here, I would take everyone to the far banks 
and ask not even for a penny. So the old shepherd agreed and continued on his way home alone. He ambled and rambled along and soon his path took him winding back to where the first youth stood. You have so many fine sheep, my son, said the old man. Would you give me one? If I gave one of my sheep to everyone who happened by, in the end I would not have a single sheep to my name. The old man gave a wave of his hand and suddenly the hill turned to stone. Then he continued on his way to meet the second son. What a lovely vineyard you have, dear boy. You could give me a vine or two. I will not give you a vine, not even a cluster of withered grapes. And before he could so much as cast a glance at his vines, the entire vineyard turned into a field of prickly hawthorn. The moon was high in the sky by the time the old shepherd reached the river where he found the youngest son. He called out to the other side of the river, Come, come across the waters on the ferry. The wife of the ferryman was heavy with child, so the old man had to wait a while, but the youngest brother soon crossed the waters on the ferry. He did not ask as much as a single penny from the old man. Meanwhile, the baby was born, and they asked the old shepherd to be the godfather. By the time the baby had grown to be a boy of seven years old, he already seemed to be a lad of twenty. The old man said to him, Now, Sebastian, for this was his name, I will give you a sword. If you tell this sword, 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 sharp and true, Mighty sword, slice his head in two, And it will slice the head from the neck of any foe. The boy thanked the old man. And now, said the old man, go to see the king of the nearby lands, for they need as many shepherds there as there are days in the year. But do not ask a high wage, no more than 12 gold coins, a saddle and a horse. Play on the pipes and drive the flock into the rosemary forest and fear nothing. So he went to see the king of the nearby lands. Your majesty, do you have need of a shepherd in your kingdom? Indeed I do, said the king, and he took the boy into his service. Take the flocks out to graze and play the pipes as you watch over them, but do not go over the bridge, for if you do, you will surely meet your death. Sebastian took the flocks out to graze, playing on the pipes. The king watched him from the window. The boy was deep in a rosemary forest. He took off his cloak and spread it out at his feet. Then he took out his pipes and played on them. There was a stream nearby. And as the water rushed and gushed, suddenly a seven-headed dragon emerged from the water. And pray tell, what stray winds have brought you here? Do you seek the unhappy fate of the other shepherds who came here before you? Sebastian took his sword in hand and asked the dragon calmly, why? What fate befell them? Why, if you are so bold to ask, I will show you, roared the dragon, and he charged at the boy. Sebastian lifted the sword above his head and cried out, Sword, sword, sharp and true, mighty sword slice his head in two, and each of the seven heads of the dragon fell with a thud to the ground. The next day, when Sebastian was eating his breakfast, a nine-headed dragon emerged from the waters of the stream, but it fared no better than the seven-headed dragon before it. The king could not fathom what had happened, for until this Sebastian had come along, he had lost a shepherd every day of the year. I will pay it little mind, thought the king. We will wait and see what the fates have in store. Again Sebastian took the flocks out to graze, and he stopped to have a drink from the stream, when suddenly a twelve-headed dragon emerged from the waters. How dare you come to this place? Sebastian drew his sword. Sword, sword, sharp and true, mighty sword slice his head in two. When the dragon had but a single head remaining on its shoulders, he begged for mercy. Oh, Sebastian, Sebastian the dragon slayer, please leave me with this one head and I swear I will serve you. So Sebastian let the dragon keep the last of its twelve heads. Under the bridge there was an enormous cave, and the dragon took Sebastian to its mouth. Sebastian had never seen anything like it before. It was an empire bigger than the realm of the king. There Sebastian found the sheep and the shepherds that had been stolen by the dragons. Come with me to see the king, said Sebastian. And with that, he sliced the dragon's last head off. When he returned to the castle, the king soon realised he was a man of great courage and strength. 
He gave Sebastian his daughter's hand in marriage and with it, half of his realm. I accept your daughter's hand in marriage, said Sebastian, but your lands you may keep, for I am a lord of a kingdom even finer than yours. They celebrated their wedding that very day and they all lived happily ever after. Hungarian Folk Tales The Man with the Heart of Stone Once upon a time, in a distant land beyond the hills, there lived a poor old woman who had three handsome sons. One day the young men decided to set out in search of maidens from other lands to take as wives, for in their village they found not a single one to their liking. And as they ambled and rambled, their path took them through a vast forest, where they saw a small cottage and went inside. Blessings of the Lord on you, old man, said the youths. Would you give us lodging for the night? I will gladly give you lodging. So the young men stayed for the night, and in the morning the old man said, Good men, your path has brought you to me and when you return, it will bring you to my home again. I gave you shelter, and in return, I ask that you bring me a beautiful maiden whom I can take to be my wife. The three young men thought, a young maiden for this old man? The greybeard can barely hobble along. But they kept these thoughts to themselves and tried to hide their laughter. The three youths traveled to distant lands as they had planned and entered into the service of the king. The king had three beautiful, strong daughters. The youths served so well and fought so bravely that the king grew fond of them. So he gave them his daughters to be their wives. With great joy, the youths brought their wives home, but on their way, they had to cross through the vast forest where the old man lived. When they came to his cottage, they greeted him. Blessings of the Lord on you, old man. Blessings of the Lord on you. You were gone for a long time. I see you have found yourselves lovely wives. But where, pray tell, is my maiden to wed? The young men said, we did not bring you a maiden to wed. You did not bring me a maiden to wed? Then I will turn you all to stone and only one maiden will remain to be my wife. And as he spoke, the young men and the two girls turned to stone. One maiden remained, whom he kept by his side. She swept, cooked, and cried all day. One day, the old man was in very high spirits. The maiden said to him, Kind old man, why did you turn them to stone? Because my heart is made of stone too. And where is your stone heart? It is there, between the bedsheets. The old man left the cottage and went wandering in the forest. The maiden picked dozens of flowers and wove a beautiful garland, which she placed on the bed. In the evening, when the old man returned, he began to laugh and cackle. Why did you put that garland on the sheets? Because I wanted your stone heart to know joy, so I made a lovely garland. The old man laughed heartily. I can see you are a kind-hearted girl. You thought my stone heart was in the bedsheets, did you not? Ah, but it is not. Then tell me where it is, kind old man, the maiden pleaded. Listen closely. In the middle of the vast forest, there is a huge rock. And in the rock, there is a little bird. And my heart is in that little bird. If someone smashes the rock, catches the bird, and takes from it my heart, then I will have my heart again. The girl sank into thought. Oh Lord, what man can do that? Many years passed, 
and the poor old woman was still waiting for her three sons to return home. She thought surely they had died, and another son was born to her, and he grew up to a boy 12 years of age. Dear mother, he said one day, do I have neither brothers nor sisters? With great sorrow in her voice, the old woman told him that he had had three brothers, and they had travelled to distant lands in search of maidens to marry, but they had never returned. Well, he said, prepare me for the trip, and I will set out to find them. The poor woman gave her youngest son food for the trip, and, weeping bitter tears, she bid him farewell. He set out on his way, and after he had travelled far, he sat down to eat and said, Anyone who is hungry, come join me. Suddenly a ram with tremendous horns on its head came out from the forest. You summoned me, young man. I am here. The young man treated the ram to a feast. And when they had eaten their fill, the ram said, Take a hair of mine, and should you find yourself in danger, I will come to your aid. The young man continued on his way and eventually sat down to eat once more and said, Is there anyone here? For I have a little food left. And a dove alighted on his shoulder. Come and eat with me. Take a feather of mine, and should you find yourself in danger, I will come to your aid. The young man continued on his way and he eventually found himself at the cottage where the stone-hearted man lived. So he knocked on the door. But the man wasn't at home, only his wife. Good evening, and what brings you to this distant place, young man? The young man replied, I set out to see distant lands and you. Do you live alone in this little cottage? I am not alone, replied the maiden. An old man lives here too, but now he's wandering in the forest. And then the maiden spoke of her grief, of the men and the maidens turned to stone statues. And she also spoke of how the old man could get his heart back. The young man set out to find the great rock. And when he came upon it, he sighed, If only that battering ram were here, he would smash this rock for me. And magically the ram appeared and butted the rock once, twice with his tremendous horns and smashed it to pieces. Now all I need is the dove to catch the little bird, he sighed, and magically the dove alighted again on his shoulder and there and then it caught the little bird. The youth took it in his hand and returned to the cottage, and as he approached, the old man said to the maiden, Oh, my dear girl, I do not know what is happening to me, but I feel great warmth and my chest seems to beat again. And as the youth drew close to the cottage, the old man began to shed tears. Old man, I bring you back your heart. The old man put the heart of the little bird where his heart once had been, and it beat again as it had beaten before. Then the maiden spoke. Now, old man, bring those statues back to life. Let them know joy again. The old man brought them back to life. They paid him thanks, embraced one another, and set off homeward bound. They celebrated with a huge wedding feast and they all lived happily ever after.